We need uh, better organizations and institutes, both in developing countries and in uh, aid countries and donor countries. Secondly, we need to make sure that the private sector is much more involved than it has been. Uh, I often say that if you go anywhere in Africa, you can always get a Coca-Cola bottle or a Pepsi-Cola bottle, but you can't get a, a bag of seed or a bag of fertilizer. The private sector knows how to get things out, knows how to get things distributed. And so it's going to be important to get the private sector involved, but not just the private sector working on its own, because it has its own particular set of objectives, it's a profit maximizer, it may be looking for the low-hanging fruit, it may be looking for where the biggest profit is, but the private sector has got the skills and the capacity and often the equipment and the research to make things happen. So what we're really looking for are public-private partnerships. Uh, at a very simple level, a public-private partnership is some kind of uh, partnership between a, a government agency and a private sector company. But usually they're, they're more complicated than that. Uh, partnerships which bring together uh, government and other public money, bring together the private sector, and in many cases also bring local communities. Let me give you an example of uh, a public-private partnership that's uh, being built up in, in southern Tanzania. Uh, and the partners are the Tanzanian government. They are the a program called AGRA, the Alliance for a Green Revolution for Africa, which is funded by the Gates Foundation and by DFID, the uh, Department for International Development in, in Britain, and by the Rockefeller Foundation. But they also involved a number of private sector actors. First of all, they are building up uh, seed companies. They're getting a number of small seed companies to start up uh, private seed companies that will provide appropriate seed for the southern highlands of Tanzania. Uh, but to get them started, they need some injections of capital, and so some of that capital is coming from public sources. Now, when they produce the seed, they somehow have to get that seed distributed to the farmers. And there, what they're doing is encouraging agro-dealers. Now, agro-dealers are small shops, if you like, in the villages. They're run by, usually run by women. They're private, but to get going again, they need a bit of capital. And of course, at the beginning of each year, they need some credit to get themselves started to buy in the produce in bulk that they're going to sell individually as they go along. Uh, and then, of course, when it comes to marketing, there will be a private market system which is being built up, which allows people to get the best uh, price they can for their produce. And the markets may be local, but the real opportunities are having markets that are national and that markets then connect nationally to the world as a whole. So what you have to do is to provide ways in which that access to markets is made as easy as possible. But it also means that you have to have decent regulations. You've got to have uh, a system of marketing which is understood, in which people know where they stand, uh, they know what the market is going to be like from week to week and month to month. And you also need a, an international system of trade and marketing that allows uh, for relatively easy access for developing country farmers.